Hi, I'm Mick from MDC in Brisbane, and this is your walkthrough on your XT16 Island Bed. Let's go have a look. To start our journey, we're going to talk about things that you do before you come and turn up to us to pick up your van. One is make sure that you've got a brake controller in your car. The brake controller will assist you in a, uh, your brakes on your van. Okay, with that, you need a 12 pin plug, which has got the bottom seven is exactly the same as a normal flat seven. All right, but we have another wire going to the number 12 pin, which gives you power for your um, breakaway system. The other thing is your 50 amp Anderson plug, so that's five zero Anderson plug. So that's gonna help you with your charging of your batteries. So you've got a full battery system when you get to where you're going. Also guys, you need to remove the tow ball off your car. Now, saying that, your tongue needs to look like this when you turn up. Okay, so ball off. Okay, so we can attach our receiver that goes on the DO35 or polyblock, whichever, so therefore we can get you on the road. On hooking up from your, your van to your car, guys, we have a DO35 hitch. All the same on the XT range, okay? So basically, it's just the pin that goes underneath it. Basically, once you're over the top, with the jockey wheel, you wind down as far as it goes, as in like, once the jockey wheel becomes loose, all ball weight is here, push the red button. That means it's locked on, okay? So once this button is pushed and this little arc comes forward, that means it's locked on. To get it off, push the button down, push that back, release the button, and you open up the throat, and then you wind the jockey wheel off. But we're, we're hooking up at the moment, so button down, and then 12 pin plug, plug that in just there, secure it. Your Anderson plug, 50 amp, charging of the batteries, plug that in, and then chain. By law, you have to cross the chains, okay? So it's a, it does a support role for anything should happen. Okay, once you cross your chains, what it does, it acts as a cradle. So if anything should fail here, it falls into a cradle, so it supports the towing of the van. Obviously, you'll know it's coming off. Instead of, if the chains were um, straight up and down to there, what it could happen is it could dig in, essentially flip on the car, and that's what we don't want. All right, so hence why you've got to cross your chains. Also, breakaway unit. Now, this must be attached to your chassis not to your chains, all right? Has to be to the chassis of your car. So, easiest part on this car is around this bar that's here. If your van comes detached from the car, this, your breakaway unit, on this wire, it pulls out, okay? And then it activates the electric brakes that are in there. So the brake comes on so it doesn't career around the road or anything. Comes on until you can push that back in, resets everything. And then jockey wheel up. So pull the pin, swing it up, make sure those pins go back in through here, handle up, handbrake off. You're done, you're ready to go. On your jockey wheel here guys, every time you're taking it off from the car, be it camping, at home, whatever, what I would suggest is have the wheel running crossways across your van, not vertical with the van, but crossways the van it seems to support your A-frame a lot better. But also, when you're reversing on, if you miss it a little bit, you're able to move on the wheel itself, not move the whole jockey wheel. So you're moving on the wheel first. So for safety reasons and so forth, and that, make sure you're, you're having your jockey wheel run across your van. On all your caravans, guys, you have four stabilizers, okay? Two at the front, two at the rear. All right, easy is take a bit of pressure off, pull the handle, pull them down so it's nice and vertical. Get your wind down bar, pop it in there. Wind her out. Now, remembering that this is a stabilizing unit for your van. This is not a jack. This is not a jacking point, all right? Your jacking points are here, all right, just in front of that. Basically, if you did get a flat tire and so forth, put these down for safety reasons, but these are stabilizers and stabilizers only for your van. 
when you're hooking up your gas, check your O-ring, just make sure it's all perfect. Put it in the place provided. Once you've got the proper seal on there, you'll go cook up the rest of your kitchen and then you'll come and turn on the gas. On your 16 island guys, on this hatch here is your filling point. Okay, mains water, tank water, whichever, that's in this little compartment here. So the one on the left is filling your water tanks, right is mains water pressure. All right, just underneath that is your breather for when you're filling up your tanks. When hooking up the mains water, you've got to get a three quarter inch Nilex or Nita product to go in there so you can hook up to mains water. And then all your taps and everything would come live, but that's what you need to hook up to your mains water pressure. And this little bad boy, when you are hooked up to that, you can leave it closed and coming out of there. Everything underneath the, um, the van is all food grade. The poly tanks, the hoses, they're all food grade. So filling it up, do not use your garden hose. Go out to Bunnings and buy some food grade hose. Your grey water tank, as in flush. Grey water tank in here. Key in, open her up, flushing point. Stick your finger in there to get the right size hose that you're gonna flush your grey water tank. When you come down to here, here's your hose. You turn that on. Basically, you can flush your tank. Another little feature is a tap on the front end. You know, if you need to wash your hands, the little ones that have got dirty fingers or whatever want to wash their hands, once you've got your water pump on or plugged into mains water, right, this becomes activated. All right, so as simple as just turn and tap. Next is your shower in here. You've got two nozzles in there, hot and cold, and obviously the hot will come on if you're using your hot water. And this is your little valve, basically for flow of water, okay? When you're not in use, just hang that up there. At the front of the van is where your diesel heater is and a little bit of storage. Again, whatever fits, fits. If it don't fit, don't force it. If it's night time, you need to have a look at something. You got a little touch light here. On your XT range, guys, through your door. This key here that's got the rounded edges and such, a big silver one, you usually got two big silver ones. This one is your door. Okay, so unlocking your door, key in, turn to the front, handle to the front, opens it up. On this particular model as well, when you do lock it, it's key in, handle to the back, turn it to the back, key back, it's locked. When you want to be locking it from inside, internally, the little silver knob that's here, just turn it, it's locked. Also, when you want to open the door from the inside, because you've got to move the door handle to the front, right? It's up the inside. Don't pull it down because you're just locking it again. Up and open. When you want to separate your door, there's a little black lever here. You push up, it unlocks it, and it's door separated. When you want to click it back together, you grab the top, click, bottom, click, it's all back together. And this is how you operate the steps. So basically, just pull out and lock it into place. And when you want to put it away, slightly lift and just push. On all your vans, guys, you have recovery points. Now, these, these recovery points are rated to three and three quarter ton. All right, so therefore, basically, what you've got to do is unhook from your car and hook up to these for safety purposes, because some good Samaritan might come up behind you, want to drag you out and these can actually get ripped out because you're trying to snatch too much out of there. All right, so basically, unhook from your car, recovery points, we'll pull you out, not a problem. The rear right-hand side, which is your driver's side, first compartment down here is your Dometic toilet. Okay, basically, push the buttons in, open her up. On your toilet cartridge, it's actually linked to your water tank underneath the van. This one um, draws its water from your own tanks. Um, to take it out, there's a little green lever under here. Flick that up, unlock it, and you drag it out. And obviously, it's got wheels on. Push the button, extend the handle, and go for a walk, empty your container. When you push this button in, it just sort of relieves the pressure. So you can, when you tip it upside down, you can empty all your wastewater. Once you get to your dump point, undo that, and obviously, tip it upside down to uh, empty all the cart um, cartridge full of waste. All right, put that back on. And again, put it back, lock it off. There's a little sensor up top. You've got to make sure that connects to make sure all functions inside work properly. 
Also in your toilet cartridge, it's, it's considered to be black water. So you must dump it in the appropriate places, okay guys? On your XT16 Island, um, at the front of your van, the front left hand side, which is your passenger side, the front compartment is your external kitchen. All right, so we're just gonna have a look at that. It's got a safety lock, blue tab down, grab the handle and pull it out. You got two bungee cords, one front and back for your extra bench space on the rear of your kitchen. So that's your extra bench space. This slips up and comes up, that acts as a little windbreak. So when that is up and that's up, there's your little windbreak that you got for this model. On here, you've got a little drying rack. So basically once you pop that up, there's a little pin you pop out, that pops down, pop that out, that pops down, in place there, in place there, so your little drying rack at top. You got your kitchen leg there, it's just a support leg. Basically it just goes in this back corner here. Lift it up ever so slightly so it's all square and just do it up. So hooking up your kitchen, basically in here, you got your water, hot and cold. It's a compressor bayonet so put that end in and pull it back over the top. Your gas line comes out of um, underneath here. Again, it's just a bayonet. You take the cap off, push in and turn to your right. Your 12 volt comes out the same place where your gas does, so it comes out through the bottom. Pass it out through the bottom and just plug her in. Also, with the hole that comes out through the knee, underneath, basically your grey water from your sink. Okay, dispose of it properly into a bucket or another little hose attached and let it run away. Okay, so with the kitchen as well, you've got hot and cold running water here, but again, for if you want your hot water, you've got to light your hot water system, your trim or hot water system. And don't forget, it does take about 15 minutes to heat up. Okay, so lighting the kitchen. Basically, gas on, hit your 12 volt spark. Once you light your gas, make sure you hold it for five seconds, six seconds, okay? And then let it go, and it should stay lit. On the drawers on the kitchen, guys, basically, they've got soft clothes. Handles that fold down. The electric awning outside is hooked up to your main battery. All it is, open the door, hit the button, opens up. It's all electric, so you don't have much to do. When it's coming out, if any wind is hitting you in the face, be safety conscious and just hold your awning. Okay, because what you don't want is a massive gust coming and ripping this clean off your um, caravan, all right? So two or three fingers on here. You don't have to have any pressure on it, all right? It's just there just in case. And while you're all holding on to it, guys, what you don't have to do is you don't have to run over and hit the kill, um, stop button. When it gets out to a certain point, it will stop automatically. So retrieving your legs. Pop one end, slide your hand along, pop the other end, straight down. And I find it the easiest way is to stay on the inside of it, okay? Undo that, you can use that as a slide to slide it out. All right, extend it down to here. The bottom goes in, slip that back down, and once you get to the desired level, the inside one, you just tighten her up and lock her into place. With your electric awning, you've got two options for your legs, okay? So when you do pop it off, if you do not want to go back to the van, undo, straight down, you peg it to the ground. These two little duvalackies, all right? One is your manual override for electric awning, all right? and this is your adjusting tool. So basically, if you pull out these wires or something happens where you can't use the electrics on your electric awning, this is your manual override. Basically, it just goes up inside here, and you wind this. And then if something did happen, it comes in wrong, if it gets thrown about on the wind or something, this is your manual override for your adjusting tool. And they sit side by side, like that, up inside the cradle in here. Okay, obviously guys, you've got to unpeg. You loosen off here, that slides back up. 
all right? Have your right hand up here as you're pushing that in as you swing it up. So it slips in there. Make sure that this is square here. So it folds in nice and flush. Pop that lid. All right, it comes out. You slide that up. You lock it off. Swing that up. Make sure that that's flat at that end. Clips in. And then you come over here. You got open and closed. So therefore you just push the button closed and it comes in. Above your fridge, the little cabinet up here, is where your electrics are, your kill switch. So obviously you will turn that on, you'll turn individual bits and pieces on. If they're not working, you got resettable fuses up the top here. So you just hit that twice, resets it, and if it doesn't work, basically you got a little fuse in behind there that you can actually replace if you really need to. So uh, you can unscrew it, take the little fuse out, replace it if need. You got your voltmeter here and you got your amp. So um, with your voltmeter, uh, 13 is full. Do not let any of the um, volts go down to past 12.2, all right? I would tell you once a month, come out and check it. At 12.2, you've got to put charge in it, all right? You get down to a point where you're at 40%, you could, your batteries could collapse. So just make sure you maintain your battery system. All your electric gear is in the dinette closest to your fridge. You have two batteries, your 1000 uh, watt modified inverter there, your DC, DC charger, and your 240 charger. Basically, this is where you put the cords through if you want to use your inverter. So just pop your cords through there, plug it in your inverter, so there's no cords hanging out at the top of it. So you can close it, and you're not gonna get a shock if you sit on. Above your range hood is where you have your remote, projector remote, so you can change it all up from internally. Okay, so your 240 charger, obviously here you got a switch that turns it on, and this is where you can relate to it goes through the battery type and so forth. Just at the top there, it's all calcium, gel, AGM, and so and wet battery. So therefore, if you do want to change out your batteries, you get onto that setting. So basically, you can choose what's going on in there. Your IDC25, DC, DC charger, obviously that relates to solar and so forth. Charging light, that'll be green. That means it's working. That's working off the solar and then also if it goes to the alternator, which is off your car. Okay, so if that flash is red, you mean, you know, there's a little bit of a problem. If it's flashing green at the top, you know she's working fine. And obviously, your 1000 watt modified inverter, you gotta turn that on when you need to, when you want to use it, because what the inverter does, it converts all your battery energy to 240 energy. That's why you've gotta plug into here. That's why in any van, if you've got 10 amp poles inside, basically they do not come alive until you're plugged into 240. This changes the 12 volt to 240 so you can plug things in. So this is a thousand watt modified. So basically anything that you wanna run, you check on the back of any unit. If it runs more than a thousand watts, well you can't use it. If it's under that, you're gonna be fine. You also have a master switch here. Um, if that Leave, little lever there is popped out like that. That means things are, are tripped out. You pop that back up. Right, that's one of your master switches. And also you've got all these circuits where um, positive and negative come onto there. Um, there's a little button on the inside of here, so that's how you reset everything, okay? So you just push that button back in just to make sure it's all working fine. Your power source on the outside of your van is 15 amp. So when you get a 15 amp lead, you can plug it into the front, so you got 240 in. That comes in handy, one, if you want to top up your batteries, and two, if you've got air con, you have to be running on at least a 3 kVA or 240. And don't forget, when you're plugged in here, it's only when those uh, 10 amp poles inside that they come alive. Also, when you're plugged into 240, guys, don't have your um, extension cord coiled really tight. It's got to have a little bit of space about it. So meter, meter and a half, as in loop-wise, the RCD units will trip out and such, but so long loops. Now, whilst at home, if you haven't got a 15 amp at home and you need to charge it, go to Bunnings and buy yourself an adapter. It's called an amphibian adapter from 10 to 15, because you must maintain your batteries in your van. Okay, with any electrical problems, guys, what you need to do is come in and check your RCD unit. 
All right, see if it's tripped out. So if any faults come through, come and check this little, little unit first. So in your 16 island, obviously underneath your bed, there's some storage wipe. And under here, basically they keep your wind down bar for your stabilizers, your leg for your kitchen, um, all bits and pieces, stashing of your TV, um, annex and so forth, external shower. All right, so you just pop that up, it's under gas struts and so forth. So when you want to, get into them. Other than that, just drop it down, like such, and you got sleeping. Okay, with the Thetra Fridge here, basically you gotta turn it on internally where it says toilet and fridge. So you turn it on, it's there, turns it on, turns it off. When you turn it on, all these stars will light up the top. That's full function. So if you wanna turn it down, you go through the motions of what bar you want it at. To open your fridge, it's got a little latch there. Pinch them together, safety latch comes off, and you open up, and there's your fridge. You got freezer capacity at the top, door storage, crisper down the bottom, and it's 148 litres. Close that back up, and latch that back up. So very important guys, when driving to and from, it's parked overnight and then you're on it the next day, you've always got to make sure your fridge is turned on. Because I don't know about yourself, but I like everything to be nice and chilled. Because that's what a fridge is for, is to have everything chilled make sure your fridge is turned on at all times which is the toilet and fridge button up here and also your kill switch to be turned on in your 16 island what you do have you've got a sink on this side hot and cold running water there you've got a three burner to medic burner on this side okay basically push the knob in turn it for gas obviously the gas is going to be turned on at the front ignite gas will come on leave it on there for at least five to ten seconds let go and it'll stay lit. So also part of your kitchen, you have a range hood. So you have the exhaust fan here, just in case you start burning something. And then you have a light. Hopefully with the light, you won't burn things. So this is your kitchen area internally. When you are cooking inside, you must remove this. Okay, so that's got to come off when you are cooking inside. Obviously when you, before you go on your journeys, you pop it back on, but when you are cooking inside, you're supposed to take that pad off, all right? Ventilation. Also on your 16 island, what this little table here, it's just an extension of your bench, your kitchen bench. So if you need a little bit more prep space, that's why you extend that up, obviously when you're cooking and so forth, but when you want to go to bed, there's two little latches underneath, pop them away, push it down so you can get around the bed. One of the features in your 16 island is basically your trimmer hot water system. Uh, it's where it's lit here. Basically the trimmer hot water system is underneath your sink and such with all your plumbing, your sea flow water pump and that. That's just under there in the cabinet, so easy access. But turn it on, it's just here at the top. All right, so you turn it on once your gas is on. The little red light comes on here, it hasn't lit. If it had, nothing's come on, basically you know it's lit. So basically you've got to go outside and take the cover off. Once you've turned your Truma hot water system on inside, this is your exhaust. Open this up. Now it shows you how to take this off. Basically push your thumbs in, it splits the top, it comes off. So you must release this as soon as you turn your hot water system on. So once you've lit your hot water system and you've taken your cover off, what I would ask you to do guys, is basically come and check it at two minutes and eight minutes. Come and check with the back of your hand if heat's coming out, all good. If it's not coming out, redo it because basically with the lines that aren't purged properly it'll light because an air block in behind it it's going to go out so you might have to go and do it two or three or four times so the air, um, air comes out of it and the gas comes through the lines also on your 16 island you got the dinette or option for a bunk when you want to convert it to a dinette just pick it up at say 45 degrees unlock it onto there lock it back into place Extend the leg, box in the place, you have your dinette. One of the features in the 16 range, and we've got them in the 15s as well, is the footrest. Okay, you've got a little handle there, you pull that up, it extends your seat. So therefore, 
sit back, relax, kick your legs out, right? And it is only a footrest though. It's not for little children to be sitting on because it's got a weight restriction it's only of a couple of kilos. So then when you want to drop it down, there's two little pegs underneath. You push, drop it back down into place. In this particular model on the 16 Island, just beside the person that sleeps on the right hand side, uh, is where you turn your diesel heater on. Basically you've got to turn it on in your function box inside, your mains and so forth. You've got to turn the heater on and then just hit the center button. You've got to turn it up to full, make sure it builds up. You've got to let, let it build up, all right? If you want to turn it down to the desired level, you just, the big knob at the top, you turn it down for fan wise and how much heat you want to come in. Also, if your red light comes on in your diesel heater, that's one, maybe you had a diesel at the front, but two, it just hasn't lit, so you just got to try it again. Give it a couple of seconds, or maybe about 20 seconds, and then try it again. Your tank is at the front. If, for some reason, you run out of diesel, please do not come out here while it's running and put more diesel in it. You have to let it shut down, you have to let it wind down, and then come in here, pop more diesel in it, and then go back in and light it again. Please do not fill it up whilst it's running. The added advantage of this van is you have a separate toilet and shower. Your toilet is on the left hand side, so the, uh, the passenger side of your um, caravan, and on the right hand side is your shower. Everything from here, as in sink and shower and such, it's already plumbed to your grey water tank. The toilet here is a Dometic toilet, like I said, it, it feeds from your own water. Um, the center button here is your flush button. If any one of these red lights are lit up, basically it's telling you one, your cartridge is not put in, in properly, um, one, the water level is down low on your tank, and then it'll tell you the other two red lights of when, um, how, what level of water you have in the disposing unit. Just at the back here as well, you've got the showers on the left hand side, it's a passenger side. There's a little magnet, so it helps it close, and a little latch there to keep it closed. Okay, so on bumpy roads. So you open it up here, you have an exhaust fan, so if you're having a nice hot shower, exhaust fan gets all the um, heat out and so forth, so there's a hatch at the top of that. There's little storage racks up top, top here, so in the towel rack you can put on there, obviously you take the towel out before you have a shower, it's gonna get wet. That's basically all that is. With your shower hatch, guys, what it is, you got a little button on here, turns the light on, you got a little swivel, opens up the hatch, you got a neutral switch in there, you've got an external fan that takes that out, or you've got a one that blows in. Here's a little basin and bowl that's just here. You've got your push button to lock it off, open it back up, the water drains away, just so you can move the nozzle just over a little bit if you want to brush your teeth and such. And so, a little basin in here for the brush of your teeth and such. And just behind me, we have a little hatch. You've got dirty clothes, just right in that little hatch there. With the internal windows, guys, it's got little grey buttons there. You must push that button in and move the handle. Push the button in and move the handle. Please don't just yank on it because you'll break the internal lock. All right. The window itself goes out to three positions. All right. Once you hear the click, stop. You go too far, you release it, it'll come back in. All right. So, therefore, we go out to do that. I released it. Once you feel a click, stop. I want to release it, bring it back in, all right? You'll hear that click. Well, you know it's locked back into place. Also, when you close and guys, there is two little latches in here where you can go into the center or go completely on the inside of it. All right, if you go into the center, it leaves a little gap for ventilation, all right? So at night time, if you want a little bit of air, fine. But when you're traveling, it's got to be on the inside one, the internal one, or else you're just going to fill up with dust. Also, with your window, you have a fly screen that comes down, and you have a privacy screen that comes up, which you can go half and half if you wish. Just clip them together as such. All right, separate. Just go slowly. Don't be in a rush. You're on holidays. You don't need to be in a rush. Just push them away slowly. That's all you need to do. Above your main sleeping area, you have a hatch in your roof. Basically, it's got the same tabs as the windows. 
So basically, you've still got a button, you've still got to push it on both sides. You've got a handle that swings down, and then you can open it up and push it up. There's only one setting, it's either opened or closed on this one. You have got privacy and also fly screen. You can do a 50-50 if you like. But what I will warn you against is when it's closed up and you're not using it, okay, and you have your blind across, what it does, it builds up a lot of heat, a lot of hot air in between the two surfaces. So what I will tell you to do is not have that closed up. I wanna let the air come through, not with the hatch open, but so it circulates a little bit more. So you have a 40 degree day in between those two uh, areas, it can go up to 70, 75 degrees, all right? So just make sure that that's open so that filtrates through so you don't get any warping of these two units. So with your aircon, it is only run on 240 or at least a two and a half KVA Jenny. So you have to be plugged into the 240 outside to run your air. It will not run off your battery system. You'll have two Sirocco fans. You've got to have it turned on. Okay, so there's a switch panel on the side of the Sirocco fans. You've got to touch it three times to make it work. So on, a little bit faster, a little bit faster, and then off. All right, you've got a little, what's that down the bottom? So it undoes, moves it around, and so forth. So you can position where you want the airflow to go. You've got light switches here. One is reading lights for all the beds. Another one is down lights from the roof. The other one, toilet light there. The other one has a little blue floor light. So therefore everything still can be out and you'll have a little blue light on the floor just so it gives you a little bit of light. Um, but when these are turned on, you can turn these off individually if you like. All right, so if someone wants to go to bed at any point in time, they finish reading, just turn your light off. You don't need to turn it off here. One of the features in the 16 Island is you have some mood lighting up the top here and above your cupboards. It will fade in, fade out. If you don't want that function to be on, all it is is push this button up here, turns it off. On your 16 Island, just beside your bed, is hanging space. Just below that, there's 10 amp sockets, two double pole. You can plug into that. And just beside that, there's USB and 12 volt sockets. Okay, so you can plug in whatever you have, 10 amp or a 12 volt. All right, just underneath that is a drawer. It's only a little drawer and uh, just a little cabin underneath that. So all this 16 for whatever side of the bed you sleep on, there's storage for that particular person. We do have a lot of storage. So for most people, it's ample storage for everyone. Obviously with the clasp there, you push the button in, it releases. So plenty of storage in there, the one next to it and such, all right? But in all our vans, we have at least a good amount of storage. In each one of the vans, they come with a smoke alarm. So that's compulsory, you have to come with a smoke alarm, but it's up to you as the individual to make sure you change your batteries out. All right, so yes, it comes with a smoke alarm, but you have to change it out. It's placed in certain places in the roof. All right, each van is a different spot, but you'll have a smoke alarm in every van. Also in each van, guys, I mean, one of the drawers, there'll be a little booklet. All right, each booklet will contain whatever the van has got, be it hot water system, diesel, air cons, radios, blah, blah, blah. There's a little satchel here. It's got everything in there. So just have a read up of it. All right, and then if you need to, you go to your user's manual and you troubleshoot and so forth from there. On your caravans, guys, it doesn't really matter if it's a 12, 14, 15 or whichever. Your tire pressures and your wheels and everything is all part about being maintenance, all right? So therefore, you've got to make sure you maintain everything. Each van has its own manual that you can download. So you can get the checklist off there and go through it so that you know what you've got to do at any particular time. Okay, your wheel pressures, all right? I always say, whatever you're running on the end of your car, so it might be 40. You may have to go up to 45, you may have to go up to 50, 55, depending how you weigh your van. If there's too much weight in the back of it, you might have to up your pressures in your tyre. Basically, you just got to maintain your tyre pressures at all times. You go on the beach, you drop them to a point. When you come back on the bitumen, you'll take it up. All right. Also, your wheel studs, 14 mil wheel studs, they're the biggest ones on the market. You've got to keep tension on them. 
where you supply with wheel brace. So basically it's making sure it's taut, but not ridiculously like jumping on the wrench itself. So make sure it's tight and you've got to check it uh, at 50, 150, 500. But also you've got to check it every day once you're traveling. If you're going on corrugations for two or three or four days, you check it every morning. It's about a safety thing. On every one of the vans, you have a plaque on the drawbar that shows you how to do your wheel nuts up. So it's on a star pattern, okay? You don't go around any clockwise or clockwise, whichever. It's a star pattern, so it goes on evenly. Bearings, all right? If you do any salt water, beach work, anything like that, check them more regularly than 5,000, 10,000, okay? It's common sense on all of this maintenance through your vans. It doesn't matter if it's a 12 up to a 22. It's make sure you do the maintenance. On conclusion on the XT16 Island Bed, always um, do all your maintenance on, on your van. Download all the material for maintenance wise and such like your manuals and such like that. Go away and make some memories and escape with confidence.